Seaweeds are a relatively neglected part of biology. Uh, they're an abundant resource on the seashore uh, and you know, there can be benefits from utilising this as a resource. In the last 15, 20 years or so, we have concentrated on applied aspects of, of seaweed biology and particularly what uses there can be, uses for food, uses for medicines and more recently uses for fuel. Queen's Marine Lab currently we have two different facilities for growing algae. Um, we have a microalgae facility for small scale cultures like the ones behind me here. Um, we also have a, a macroalgae facility for growing large, large algae. Microalgae basically are single celled algae um, and we can grow them from small containers like the ones we have along the top here um, up to quite large scales. These are only 5 litre containers but it wouldn't be abnormal for us to be able to grow those up to 100 litre bags. The current uh, Enalgi project, this is an interreg project basically funded from Europe. It's in uh, a region of Europe, northwest Europe, so it covers clearly Ireland, the UK, uh, France, and uh, the Netherlands, Belgium, and so on. Um, and the project is the Enalgi is short for energetic algae, so they're primarily interested in making use of algae as sources of energy, biofuels in the future. Uh, some of the algae are microscopic um, and have to be grown then in the, their small unicellular algae and these under certain conditions produce oils in their cells and these can be harvested and used directly as a sort of biodiesel. The macroalgae on the other hand are easier to grow, easier to handle because you can, you can see them and you can handle them. Um, and we are also then doing some work on macroalgae and the questions perhaps arise about exactly how we're going to extract energy from them but basically they are biomass in the same way that grass or um, trees are biomass and it will be possible to extract energy from them. It's something that we can grow in the sea so you're not using up any freshwater resources you're not using up any land-based resources. There's a lot of problems with using land crops for biofuel because they're going to be used for food or they're going to be using up a lot of fresh water and they have got a very high carbon footprint compared to some other aspects. So if we use seaweed for biofuel, because we can grow it out in the lock, it's not really taking up any land that's going to be used for anything else. We can use the sun that's provided for a light source. We can use nutrients that's in the water, so it's much more cost effective in a way than using land crops or than even sometimes than using um, microalgae as well because you have to provide artificial light and artificial nutrients. Uh, what we do is we go out onto the shore and um, particularly in Strangford Lock we want to get local species so we're not going to be introducing any new species or invasive species or anything so we have gone out we've collected local species from the shore and um, we take these in and then whenever they get to the right size and the right stage in development then we can induce fertilisation and develop them up and we grow them um, in these tanks here behind us on um, little strings so you get tiny miniature plants that then we can put out into the lock and then let them grow naturally. The amount of hand harvested macroalgae that's taken from Northern Ireland or even Ireland as a whole is much smaller compared to other countries. Just the best way to grow as much macroalgae as we can in an aquaculture environment and for it to have the best composition that's going to be suitable for biofuels. Um, we don't really know how much biomass we need for biofuels. Um, depends on what way you treat your biomass in the end. But um, if we can do it properly, you can use pretty much most of the plant to put towards biofuels or other products that are going to be useful for us. I think the attitude of, of environmental agencies at the moment is that the aquaculture of seaweed is a relatively benign process. Uh, in that you are not, well at least if they are grown on long lines, which is the way that we plan, floating long lines near the surface, there is relatively little interference with the bottom communities. If we aquaculture our seaweed, so if we grow them ourselves, then it's a much more effective way of growing them instead of harvesting, especially if you are looking at mass cultivation of seaweeds. You can't strip the shoreline of the seaweed there. There's just not enough seaweed to go around. It needs to be there for the ecosystem and it needs to be there for the environment. So if we can grow our own, it means we have much more control over the type of seaweed that we grow and the composition of the seaweed, which is important for the biofuels at the end. And also we're going to be minimising the environmental impact that we have. The speed at which it's going to be commercially developed depends a lot on 
depends a lot on the investment going into it. So if you can get um, investment from companies or investment from businesses who want to see it happen, then it tends to happen a lot quicker than if it's just going to be basic academic research because the amount of money that goes into academic research is quite minimal. Um, you're also going to need to have big investment and big acceptance of it in um, media, in the public, and in policy in particular. But um, proper large scale commercial production, I think, is going to be a few years off at least, if you want to do it right anyway. The carbon footprint or the economic footprint of macroalgae cultivation in particular hasn't been determined yet. No one actually really knows. Um, the idea is that. Um, but the potential of it is that it could be as carbon neutral as you can get, that you're taking carbon out of the atmosphere to grow seaweeds and you're producing more oxygen. Yes, you will be releasing carbon when you burn it, but if you're carbon neutral in that you're taking carbon out and burning it, instead of taking carbon from the ground, that would be remaining in the ground and then burning it with fossil fuels. That's why you're getting such an increase in carbon. You're not cycling it the way you would do if you use algal or plant-based biofuels. Um, the main issue with biofuels are gonna be the kind of investment footprint or the development of it. Um, so for macroalgae in particular, it's quite a small investment. The only bit that we need to have actual kind of input of energy is for the initial hatchery stage, which is just a very small part of the growing season and a very small part of the year compared to um, other biofuels that maybe need a lot more energy investment. It's never been done in Europe anyway on a massive um, scale, but compared to the likes of using oil or fossil fuels, and compared to um, other sources of fuels, seaweeds are going to be pretty cost efficient, pretty effective for the environment. If you can use them for bioremediation to take up nutrients as well, you're not going to be adding any extra nutrients in, so you're doing actually a benefit to the ecosystem. One of the main issues is going to be if you have got a large growth of seaweed on the surface, you might get a wee bit of shading for the communities underneath. So for benthic communities, you might be stopping the amount of light going through and then having the anchors there as well. Obviously, you're impacting directly on the benthic environment. But within the scope of this study, what we want to do is do a full environmental assessment where we're going to look at the amount of light. Is it going to be affected in any way? Are benthic communities going to be affected? Is sediment going to be affected? So all of this, we're aware that it may be an issue and we are going to be examining it to see if it actually is going to be too much of a negative impact on us. So aquaculture then is clearly a more controlled process. We can grow in controlled areas. Uh, we can manage the growth rates and we can manage the harvest uh, so that we think that uh, this is possibly a better way of producing weed as it were to order. For the mass use of seaweed in industry, I think I think it's going to take a while. I would love to see it happen sooner, but in order to do it properly and in order to fully assess all the impacts that it's going to have and the best way to go about it, um, I would prefer to see it happen slower and not be rushed. I think the potential is there. A lot of research has been done. Um, the main research that's just left to do is to see can we speed up the process or can we make it any more cost efficient or labour efficient. But um, that's going to be something that is going to require investment from companies and buy-in from the public as well.